if we talk about birthing a greater reality, I think I want to start with talking about what the nature of reality is, because so many of us have been taught that what we can see and what we can hear and what we can touch is actually reality. And those of us who are in new thought understand that that is only real in relative reality. So in unity teachings, we distinguish between ultimate reality and relative reality. So when we talk about birthing a greater reality, what we're really talking about is moving beyond what we can see and touch and taste and witness with our eyes and ears as the ultimate reality. And when we really understand the truth of our being, the true nature that we are, that source energy is the ultimate reality and that each of us is a perfect emanation or a perfect expression of that, the entire landscape of what we once called life changes and it can happen in an instant and it can take a lifetime. And in my experience, it has been both a process and a momentary experience. And again, I want to uh, thank Michael Beckwith for his reading talking about the presence and being in the present is the only place we can actually experience ultimate reality. So if it is true that we're each a perfect expression of the one power and the one presence, because, you know, I've been a lot of unities, a lot of new thought centers, and a lot of times we'll stand up at the beginning of the service and we'll say that. We'll say there is one power and one presence. And then we'll go on to say that we're each perfect expressions of that power. And what I want to offer is, isn't it profoundly simple? for us to actually experience that and to know that and to be that in the world is when everything changes. And we are living in the midst of a profound moment in human history. There is so much happening in our world. And if you turn on the TV, turn to just about any channel, you're going to hear a report. And that report is almost all from relative reality. We hear about disease. We hear about all the isms that are happening. We are being told that we are a divided nation in a divided world. And all of that can be seen as true in relative reality. And if we believe that what we can see and touch and taste is reality, then we suffer. Because there is no actually changing the world if we're only living in relative reality. In other words, many of us have been trying to change the world so that we can be happy, so that we can be at peace. The issue is it just doesn't work. And believe me, like I'm guessing is true for you, in my own journey, I spent many, many years, and if I'm honest, probably a decade or two, trying to change the world so that I could be at peace, trying to change the people in my life so that I could experience happiness. And I came into new thought, and I heard the idea that I may have been doing it backwards, that real happiness, true peace, the love frequency is the truth of who and what we are, if it is true that we're each perfect emanations or expressions of this one power, then the only thing that actually needs to be born is my consciousness. The greater reality is only a shift in my perception, my ability to see that which I could not see before. And in that way, we can unplug from trying to change the world. And as someone once very wise person said, we can be the change that the, that the world, that we're wanting to see in the world. And of course, that's Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. And so rather than focusing on relative reality that's always changing, everything is always coming together and falling apart, as Pema Jodhran says. Everything has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And suffering, in my experience, is trying to change that or manipulate that or control that. And freedom is unplugging from that and plugging into our true nature. And the great news is we actually don't have to seek that experience 
because it is the truth of who and what we are. In other words, we can call off the search and rest in the greater reality that has always been the truth of our being. So if we come into this world as whole and perfect spiritual beings, deeply connected with source energy, knowing that love is who and what we are, and we incarnate on planet Earth for whatever reason, you know, we can spend a lot of time um, debating and wondering why we have chosen to be here. Have we chosen to be here? What's the purpose of us being here? For me, the important question is, who have I come here to be? What is mine to do here on planet Earth? And if, we, if it's true that we come into this world as whole and perfect spiritual beings, and then we come into a world that teaches us something other than that, or something counter to that, then we can also say that the true spiritual journey is really a journey of returning to our true nature and taking a look at all the beliefs and ideas and situations and perspectives that we have put on top of that. So as Rumi says, we're not here to seek for love but to look at all the barriers that we've put on top of it. And for me, that was a fundamental shift because I thought the spiritual journey was about learning to meditate perfectly, learning to pray perfectly, and one day maybe I would manifest the life of my dreams. And at some point I realized that I had been spending most of my meditation time and most of my prayer time seeking something. I'm gonna be happy once I get there uh, we could call that a destination addiction. And in the book, Birthing a Greater Reality, and I want to give credit Robert Brumet, who wrote the book, Birthing a Greater Reality, which, by the way, I highly recommend. It was a wonderful and transformational book in my life many years ago. But one of the perspectives that he holds that I really love is profoundly simple. When I'm out of touch with my true nature, I seek that in the world. Now, what does that mean? For me, when I remember the truth of who and what I am, I am here to radiate that love energy or to offer something to the world. When I have forgotten that truth, when I have forgotten my true nature, I start to believe something other than reality. I start to believe in the relative reality. For example, the frequency that we tune into when we turn on the news. Uh, I love what Michael Beckwith says about newspapers. Now, we don't really have newspapers anymore, so this is a little bit of a flashback, but he says newspapers aren't newspapers, they're old papers, because they keep reporting the exact same story over and over and over again. What is that story? Fear, lack, divisiveness in all its different forms, and that is a frequency and so I remember being a little kid and mesmerized by radio. I, I mean, I can't even imagine now all the technology that we have and trying to understand that. But even trying to understand frequency or radio waves as a kid was fascinating to me because I didn't understand how you could turn your dial and suddenly there would be music. And so it was occur occurring to me that the music was playing somehow everywhere, all present, and what I tune into is what I could hear. Now, that's a profound spiritual truth. All possibilities exist in this moment as a frequency. And the frequency I tune into is what I experience in my life. In other words, another way to say that is when I adjust the frequency within me, I birth a greater reality. And the truth is, the greater reality isn't being born I'm simply aware of it. And so spiritual practice is helping us or inviting us to take a look at how we can tune into different frequencies. I remember one of my first teachers, uh, Reverend Maureen Bass, she was a unity minister. She said, if you don't like the conditions of your life and you're learning spiritual principles and you're learning that what you focus on is what grows, and you, can, you are experiencing more frustration, more divisiveness, uh, more lack in your life, think about it in this way. The law is working. 
you have been focusing on lack and limitation and look at it all around you. So you can say that this spiritual law is always working and move out of good, bad, right, wrong and into the curiosity of what we want to create. The ultimate question for me is what gets created when I blank? Fill in that blank with anything. What gets created when I believe in the paradigm of lack and limitation? What gets created when I spend time in the silence and tune into a frequency that is a love frequency or an infinite possibility frequency? And in that way, we start to hear music that we didn't even know was playing. And early in my journey, uh, I thought I was manifesting everything. I'm so powerful, look at me, I've prayed, I've meditated, I've done the vision boards, I've done my affirmations and I'm manifesting this all around me. And at some point in my evolution, I realized it wasn't really that I was manifesting anything, it was that I was expanding my consciousness and I was able to see that which existed that I literally could not see because of the lens that I was looking at life through. And that is the great awakening that can happen for each of us and does happen for each of us every time we tune into that deeper awareness. So birthing a greater reality is really changing our lens, changing our awareness, moving from lack and limitation to infinite possibilities. So I wanna um, spend a few moments on the how to, because a lot of times we have these ideas, we have these conversations, we talk about spiritual principle, we talk about how we can manifest our perfect life, and then my mind is very curious how we do it. So I do wanna focus on a couple of things that are powerful tools. One is profoundly simple and that is gratitude. Tuning into the frequency of gratitude is one of the fastest ways we can change what we call reality because it trains our mind to not look for the limitation, but to look for the possibility. But I wanna go a little deeper in gratitude because Quite often when I hear us talking about gratitude, we tend to talk about what we're grateful for. And I think it's an incredible practice. And in the beginning for me, I didn't realize how much I was actually looking for what was wrong in the world, uh, looking for the division, looking for something to confirm my own belief in my unworthiness. So learning how to be grateful for something was an incredible moment, an incredible practice that shifted my life dramatically. I wanna take gratitude a little deeper today because I want us to recognize that I'd say there are three levels of gratitude, grateful for, grateful in, and grateful as. So grateful for, as I said, and as many of us know, is a powerful tool. We make gratitude lists, we have a gratitude journal. For me, I remember, I'm sure for at least a year, I woke up every day and I wrote down 10 things I was grateful for. At some point, I realized that in some way, as powerful as it was, I needed to take it to the next level because grateful for in some way was creating duality. And it went something like this. I am grateful for this sunny day. I am grateful for this sunny day. And every day it was sunny, I could feel grateful. But what happened when I woke up and it was raining? Was I able to shift or was it difficult for me based on the idea of grateful for? I'm grateful for this incredible job, for example. What happens if I lose it? So grateful for is a nice bridge, but grateful in is the next level of that. And that is, can I be grateful in the midst of anything happening. How many of us have looked back at a time that was very, very difficult only to recognize a year later, two years later, it was a very transformational experience. My guess is we're gonna look back on this last year. And of course there has been pain that has happened. Of course, there have been so many things happening in our culture and maybe in our own personal lives that have been affected in this past year. 
And in addition to all of that, we may look back on this time as a great awakening, a transformation that has happened on planet Earth. And so being grateful in the midst of something happening is simply recognizing that even though I may not understand what is happening, I can shift into being grateful in the midst of that. But this third level of gratitude is what I really want to focus on, and that is grateful as. And that goes back to the conversation of frequency. Can I be the gratitude that the world is looking for? Can I be the silver lining? It's a profound shift when I shift from looking for the silver lining to how can I be the silver lining? And if it is true that the world is filled with infinite possibilities and what I call reality is created based on my frequency, then gratitude and recognizing that we can be the frequency of gratitude actually then begins to change what we call reality. And for me, that's the greatest paradox because I spent at least a decade in new thought trying to change the circumstances of my life. And as I said, through prayer, through meditation, through affirmations, through vision boards, and this is what happened for me. It may or may not be your experience, but what happened for me is I was able to manifest just about everything, if not everything on that vision board. I did create the life of my dreams on the outside, but what happened for me, and I'm saying it very consciously for me, is that when I reached the place where all of that was manifested, I realized it didn't really change the experience internally. In other words, I had an unconscious belief that once I manifest all the things in the world that I want to manifest, I would be happy, I would be at peace, I would feel love. And what I recognized is nothing really changed internally when things changed externally. So as Robert Brumitt in his book, Birth in a Greater Reality, so eloquently said, when we're out of touch with our true essence or our true nature, we look for the fulfillment of that in the world. And so I was looking to the world to help me feel different. And then I discovered a, a deepening. I recognized that true spirituality for me isn't so much about seeking or searching or attaining or reaching some kind of destination. It's about being 100% 100 present in this moment and recognizing, as I said earlier, we can call off the search and rest in what has always been right here, right now, one breath away. The essential truth of who and what we are is unharmed and unharmable. And then we can have an experience, a shift in perspective, where we recognize that that is reality. And what we've been calling reality is the illusion, collective, or what in unity we call race consciousness, the consciousness of the human race. The stories that have been passed down from generation to generation about all the different uh, things that create what we have been taught as reality. And so what if we actually recognize that we can shift our awareness and birth a greater reality in our consciousness, we can call off the search externally and plug in internally to this great source of knowing, this great wellspring of wisdom and information, and we can begin to lead our life or live our life from the inside out, recognizing that every, the answer to every question is within me. And the reason we come together in relationships and in spiritual community is to create a space for us to learn how to more easily tune into that frequency, and then we multiply that frequency together. That's the true meaning of spiritual community to me. We come together, we tune into that ultimate frequency, and then that frequency radiates out into the world. And so what I want to say in closing is we have shifted from the law of attraction to the law of radiance. It is time for each of us 
to be that light, to be that love, to radiate that love frequency out into the world. And through that simple yet powerful action, we can change the conditions, the circumstances of our lives. But beyond that, <clears throat> we can also be a profoundly beneficial presence on planet Earth. This is the only way the world has ever changed, one person at a time, starting in consciousness, starting in being that love frequency, radiating that outward. So as Michael said in the reading, life is a great experiment. So my invitation for you is to simply recognize the deepest truth of who and what you are. Mm -hmm call off the search, tune into your original frequency, radiate that into the world and watch what happens. So with that, I wanna invite us to take a moment and go into affirmative prayer. Taking a nice deep conscious breath together. And on the exhale, simply allowing ourselves to become fully present. Tuning into the frequency of gratitude grateful to know that there is one power and one presence active in the world, in the universe, and in my life, and in the life, the life of each and every one of us. And because we have come here today to consciously connect with one another, this light has expanded. This frequency of love is moving outward into the world. And so we have birthed a greater reality in this moment simply by tuning into our original perfection, our true nature. And so as we go out into the world, even if we're only going out in consciousness, we recognize that we've had a profound effect on planet Earth, that love is the greatest reality. And so with great gratitude, I release this knowing in the realm of spirit, it is already done. So we simply release this, we let it go with gratitude. And so it is. We let the love wash over us. We let it, we let it be. Many pray along the way, they don't stop to wonder what the world is coming to. They let something higher reveal the way to greater love. So the truth is telling me, sing of liberation for the ones who are not free. Love can take us higher, reveal the way to greater love. Oh, we let it wash over us, we let it make us kinder, we let it make us better, we let it be, we let it early in the morning, we let it hold us together. Now and forever we let it be, 
as you go within, become aware of your breath, breathing easily and freely. With each breath you take, you begin to release the anxiety or the tension of the day. As you continue to breathe and become aware of your heart space, you enter that still, quiet place within you. It's here that you feel your connection with spirit within, your own divine connection. Bring into your heart whatever difficulty or challenge you might be experiencing. If you are feeling joy and peace, bring that into your heart. Visually see whatever the challenge is. Feel it. Claim it. Continue to breathe and continue to allow your heart to open. As you affirm your oneness with spirit and recognize your own divinity, acknowledge the strength, the courage, and the wisdom that is within you as you enter now into the silence. As you slowly return to this room in this present moment in time, feel that sense of peace and calm that's filling your heart. Know that this love within your heart will guide you to the answers you seek at any time and anywhere with spirit as your guide Embrace this confidence, this strength and wisdom to move forward on your spiritual path with the assurance that all I need is already provided right now, here, in this moment. And so it is. <laughs>